this is a test of our faith. We're pained by the transition. We rejoice in the destination. I've sat here today listening to the songs of praise and words of inspiration. I'm sought to put myself, Marvin, in your place today. I'll be 69 in a few days. Jack and I have not yet had death to visit our house. But surely as we live, it is coming. Each of us will have at some point an Ezekiel moment. We've watched you these last few months go back and forth between here and Houston, around the world and back to Houston. And maybe get closer to God and your family. You feel hurt but not guilty. You've done the best you could do. If money could have made the difference, it would have been made. If love could have made the difference, we wouldn't be here today. But there comes this Lord God, thou knowest moment. There is this Job moment where you've had all of your successes as preacher, prophet, apostle, singer, success. And then Job said, something happened, I lost all of that. And my body broke out. And he said that my worst fears have come upon me. Lose a house, that's a fear. Lose your job, that's a fear. But then to lose your baby, your wife, your sister, your partner, your worst fear is upon you. But he said that though you slay me, I will trust you. One thing I know is that I know that my Redeemer lives. There is this Job worst fear moment on the way to our houses today. And I close with this note. The faithless surrender. The faithful rise to the occasion. Dr. King's father said to me one day in a silent meeting, he said, Jesse, I really thought after Dr. King made it through Mississippi, he would survive. He was always in danger. But then at high noon, he was killed at 39 in Memphis, Tennessee. He said, I loved him so much, he was named after me. He walked like me, talked like me. He was my beloved son. When all y'all left the funeral and went back to your homes, I went to the graveyard every day by myself. And I prayed to God to help me get through this alone. I focused exclusively on Martin. And one day while praying for Martin, I got the word that my son, A.D. King, had drowned in the pool. He was dead. And before I could adjust to that, a crazed man, one Sunday morning killed my wife while playing the organ in church. The worst had come upon me. He said, but I've lost all of that. But I'm not going to give up on God. I'm going to thank God for what's left. You lost a lot. But you have a lot left in these babies. God bless you and keep the hope alive. Love you, Marvin.